Welcome to Tree Dog Tuesday, only on the Fueled by Joy Working Dog Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fueled by Joy Working Dog Podcast. This is Tree Dog Tuesday, and I'm sitting here with my friend, Mr. Ashley Oxendine. Um, Ashley, you done pretty good last night. We we're here at the Grand American. You got got Hobo Cast win. Got him real close to the top 20. So, you had a good hunt, huh? Had a good hunt, yeah. Good. How'd Hobo look? He looked good. Had a little downtime. Um, Tree two coons. Um, he he looked good. We had some real good hunting. Had a good guide. Had some, had some good dogs. I know. Because where you, you're from North Carolina. North Carolina. How far are you from here? Two hours and 15 minutes. Okay, so it ain't too bad a drive for you down here then. No, been coming here 42 years. Really? Yeah. You like the Grand American? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's been something in our family many years. Really? Yeah. And your dad and everybody they hunted dad, too? Oh, uh, dad come. He always loved to come and walk and look. Um, my granddad, my uncle used to hunt in it a lot. Um, dad never hunted in it, but he just loved to come to fellowship and meet everybody and talk to everybody and look at the dogs. Yeah. That is, that's one thing about these big UKC hunts. It's not as much about the hunting as it is about seeing everybody that one time a year and, and talking and seeing all the vendors and all that stuff. It's kind of a family atmosphere, whereas you go to a, you know, PKC world hunt, everybody shows up right at deadline. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I want to talk because we've done the big country podcast and, uh, strickland's fat mouth was running the whole time (laughs) and i i couldn't get no word out of you and you was on your phone texting and doing business and stuff while john was talking but i wanted to sit down with you ashley because what i think i met you what four or five years ago probably for the first time and in this game you know all the big players you know you know the guys that are paying the big entry fees and they've got the dogs and they've got the dog power and then all of a sudden this chicken farmer from north carolina buys big country <laughs> and next thing you know big country and i'd never heard of you ashley and i'm thinking who is this guy you know and then i got to know you and of course you're one of the few guys in the sport uh that compete at the level that we compete at and nobody has a bad word to say about them and that's saying something because i can only think of two there's you and cheyenne cummins and that's about it <laughs> <laughs> but uh how'd you get into this how did you start with your love of hounds and coon hunting um my granddad my granddad hunted on my mom's side, um, on my dad's side. Their dad hunted, so I was a generation of coon hunter. Um, then I had an uncle. Um, he he loved big time black tie, black and tan guy. Yeah. Um, he's big UKC back then. Um, and I just I was started hunting when I was young, and dogs and horses what I loved, and that's what my dad loved, and he pushed it on me. And, and I just loved it. And I started off with um, a walker dog off Harwood Dan. And I had another little black dog was given to me. And these guys just give me the yeah. dogs, you know. And um, and how I really learned about training and how to be a dog man was from Jim Meeks. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, Jim was particular like letting people go hunting with him. And, and I know that I, I was a hard hunter, know how to hunt. I just didn't to take a dog to the next level, you know, yeah. training a pup and 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 I just learned so much from him. Um some guys around Fairmont, I had an old guy named Matt Leggett. Um man, I was young. I was twelve or thirteen, no license. He'd come pick me up, we'd go to the UKC hunts, I'd ride with him and draw out and beat him. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just looking back people like that that just took time with me when i was a little boy and just you know they didn't even know me just pick me up and take me yeah and i got all my pikes that i wanted when i was little yeah 10 years old That's i was like they didn't have no youth hunts back then yeah. you know you had to hunt against the big boys and them boys wasn't gonna give you no, no breaks either. absolutely yeah. they wasn't gonna give you no breaks back then and, and then we you know and then i started my business and i got older and you know starting a business coon hunting that's when i had to put it on the back burner yeah. you know and i got started getting a chicken business and it, it was day in and day out just do all i could do just to stay awake much less try to coon hunt you know mm-hmm. and i was still fooling with the horses then and 
And I said, you know, and I got in some drag racing, and I said, man, this is not me. And um, that's when my little boy said, Dad, I want a deer hunt. I said, son, I ain't crazy about deer hunting. I said, but we'll start back coon hunting. And 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 he said, good. And um, I called Rocky Hodge, longtime friend. Um, I said, I want to go hunting with you one night. And it was hot. It was summertime. Yeah. And we went up to Ash Pole Swamp. I never forget it. And he had a dog named Strong, and he cut him a couple times, and he sunk in that country and treed two coons. And I've never done drugs, but I was like an addict. Yeah, I was about to couldn't sleep. I could. <laughs> I said, "Man, what in the world? I haven't hunted in eight nine years." And it just lit that fire again, you know. And I told Rocky, "I said, Rocky, we got to find a dog." Well, I said, "You got to find me a dog." And we flew out to West Hamilton's, mm-hmm. and we flew. Um, to Nebraska. You yeah. know. Wes was the first person that told me about you. Yeah. Yeah. And we flew to Wes and he said, I said, Would you price Ruby? And he priced her, he did. You know. Um, and I think she won a hundred and fifty or two hundred after that. Yeah. And he said and he had another female there and um we talked and Ruby looked like an idiot. She was I think she was in heat or yeah. or something. And what you know, I know the deal. I know she was the real deal. Um and he told me, I said I said Wes, I want to win. I said, where's a good one? And he said, I'm telling you where it's that big country. I said, man, that's a blue tee. <laughs> <laughs> and i never forget it. He said, uh, he said he's not for sale. I said, do you think he could be bought? He said, well, three people owns him. I said, man, you'll never get that dog bought. And Steve and him kind of had backed off. And yeah. everybody was wondering where he was and why they wasn't promoting and I called Steve. I called. They wouldn't even return my phone call. <laughs> and I said, Wes, I can't get him on the phone. And Wes called, and he, he made the deal happen. Yeah. And that's how you got him. That's how I got him. What was uh, – we're going to get into big country a little bit, too, because everybody loves him. You know you love him. I know he's been really good to you and your family and everybody's – and I, you know what I think of him. But uh, what was life like for you growing up, Ashley? I mean, you – North Carolina is a different place. It's not what I'm used to. You know, I grew up in the Midwest. Every time I cross the river and I get over them Appalachians or whatever their whatever mountain ranges I got to cross to get over here, it seems like it's just another pocket of culture, and it's a different culture and it's a good culture. And I like I like being over here and I like the I like the people, but it's different. And a lot of my listeners don't know what it's like. You know, growing up in rural North Carolina and being a hound man. It's here, Josh. I mean, you got farming. You got textile plants, and around me, um, you know, when all this stuff hit, it wiped out 90% of the textile plants. Um, we got a big place called Campbell's Soup. Um, either you're going to be an entrepreneur, or, you know, you're going to make, you know, just get by, you yeah. know. And my dad, our family was iron workers and um, pipe fitters and welders, and that's the few I went in after school. Um, and we farm. I always farmed every day. You know, we cut hay. We had cattle, and my granddaddy had some tobacco. Yeah. You know, when I was a little boy, I'd work in tobacco, um, pull weeds, uh, and that's how I bought my school clothes. Yeah. You know, I was raised hard, very hard. Um, I had a wonderful mom and dad that worked hard, and and you know, people ask me, you know, where'd you go to college? You know, what kind of degree did you get? I said, I got old country boy degree. <laughs> yeah. You know, my dad my dad taught me something that was priceless and that was hard work. And sometimes man I'd sit and cry and I was like, Man, daddy's rough on me and I was a little boy. Yeah. And my dad my dad never treated me like a little boy. He said, If I can do it, you can do it. He was tough on me. And 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 then I did the construction and and I just said I told somebody, I was ten years old, I can think about it to the day. I can go back to where I was set, and people ask me about success in life. I was bailing hay in a tr- in in a place in Fairmont, and I look, and I was talking to myself. I said, "I'm gonna be a self-made millionaire." People say, "Well, you don't know." I had made my mind when I was a little boy, yeah. you know, and I had that desire, and you know, but it was tough. For old North Carolina boy, didn't you know? Like I said, I didn't go to school. My family, my dad made. Seventy thousand dollars a year back then. That was good money. Yeah. But he worked seven days a week. My yeah. dad would work fifty hours on his job, and would go his work shut down Saturdays and Sundays. You know, 
and, and I remember as a little boy, never my dad going to a program. Yeah. Nothing. Ball game, football. But you know, to today, I never hold that against my dad because he was providing for our family. And and I got a phenomenal dad. My dad had to quit school when he was third grade to pick cotton. You know, that's that's the way he was yeah. raised. He never got to go to school. He had to work. And that's the culture here. You know, it's tough. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's tough. You make it here, you wanted it. Yeah. You know, you see people that was given to them, and you see they just piss through it, you know. Yeah. But like you said, when you come here, it, the opportunity is, is, is very slim. you yeah. got to want it. you got to make your own opportunity. you got to make it, yep. And that carried over. You, you, you touched on the chicken business. And your, your work ethic is renowned, too. I mean, everybody knows Ashley Oxendine's a hard worker. And, you know, you listen to Strickland talk, which even if you only believe half of what Strickland says, <laughs> which is probably about what you should believe, uh, you're still working hard. You know, you're still out there hustling. And, uh, you know, that carries over to hounds. You know, you, you talked about that. And when I was 10 years old, I said, I'm going to make a living doing something with dogs. I don't know what it is yet. I love coon hounds. And, you know, I feel like I've made it. I, it. It's hard to get that feeling sometimes, Ashley, because all these people would love to be where I'm at right now, but I'm t- thinking about the 16-hour drive. I got to go home and see my kids, you know. <laughs> but uh, what about you? Is it? Are you ever going to just sit back and think, you know, I, I've made it. I'm here. I've well, done it. Actually, you know, with this um, political stuff we got going on, we've been the last four months. Now, you know, it's crazy that you say that. We've been in meeting with CPAs, and, and, and I had to make a long-term um, plan, you know, with this taxes and Democrat stuff we got mm-hmm. going on. It's, it's really took a toll on big business, you mm-hmm. know. And I sat back, and I had to make a 10-year plan, and, you know, if something don't change, I'm going to be forced to cut back. Um, and that's something we've been going over the last three weeks with my CPAs and and yes, I have. I really sat and thought about it because now it's got to the point it's just not worth it anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, you work and kill yourself, and, and, and like where I've come from, and just give it away now. Yeah. And, it, and it's it's just a terrible time where we're at in our country, but we're hoping for a change. But but I have made a ten year, and and I and I want to start like I told you about the deer hunt. Yeah. And that's something I've never done, and you know I'm 43. I've had two back surgeries, and. I'm getting forced to the point I know I need to yep. make a change because I push my body hard. Yeah. You know, if I keep on, I'm going to be 55 and can't walk, you know. Yeah. So I, I got to make a change. Well, I hope you do. I hope you I hope <laughs> you come out to the house and we get you on a big deer and your buddy and all that stuff because, you know, I, I see you, Ashley, and you're such a, a likable guy and a well-known guy, and I'm thinking, well, Ashley needs to take a break. <laughs> Strickland takes enough breaks for both of you, you know, right now. But I thought Ashley needs a break every now and then, too. And I feel like here in the last, you know, year or so, you, you've been at the hunt. You know, you got some dogs that you really like. You know, every, everything from hobo to, you know, country still around. And you, you guys got champ. And, you know, you guys are in a really good place right now yeah. on the hound side, too. I was looking last night. And some people don't think about it. Um... Trigger had a pup to win. Yeah. Trigger's dead and gone now. Trigger, um, Deuce, the black dog, mm-hmm. his pup won. Um, Country's pup won. You know, to me as an owner, John hates the breeding part, but just knowing we had a handshake and all yep. that, you know, man, that just, I, I, I pay attention to all that stuff. Yep. You know, when we go to these hunts, people don't think, but, but I be paying attention to Country's pups winning and, triggers pups winning yep. and, and and man you know overall that you know i got in this for the love of coon hunting i never got in it for the money yeah you know and and but now when you start for these entry fees when we go to some hunts we have 27 five in one weekend yeah so we we messed around and made it a business you know when it gets to that kind of point of a money and me and john we sat down i said john we got to make a change I said, it's getting to the point, yeah, people say, y'all win, y'all win, but it just got where it was a business. Yeah. And that's the last thing I want to make of it. Yeah. You know, me and John, I said, we need to cut back. Me and you start going more of big hunts. Yeah. I mean, we love our guys, but, man, you know, we get a phone call, we won, you know. But, yeah, we love it, but still, I mean, 
you start paying interest like that every weekend and 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 I said we need to cut back and me and you start going to the bigger hunts yeah. we had our own dogs and we did we made a big move this year yeah and and that's a promise I made myself you know I'm gonna pick I don't you know certain time we cutting corn or that I can get away and I'm gonna book some hunts and we gonna go well that's good and that that ties in with you taking a break yeah you know it ties in with you not going to the farm every day, you know, at 5 a.m. and getting home at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. or whenever you get home, you know. So I'm I'm excited to see. And John's always loved that. John's yeah. always loved going to the hunts and, and getting a dog ready. And, you know, he's taking breaks. We've all taken breaks. But, you know, to see you and John pull up, because there, there's an instance, too, especially if I'm handling in the same hunt. You know, if I draw John or I draw Ashley, I know I'm in for a good cast. And so I like to see the guys like that, you know, come back and, you know, you guys had Rick was handling with you. I don't know if that's going to be a good cast or not when I draw Jeff. <laughs> we had a good time last night. We, did, we didn't have no arguing. You know, we had some guys that, and, and man, I, I'm first class. You know, like this guy last night, he'd strike his dog. And I said, man, you sure? You know, and I didn't, like some people, you know, you know the arguing and nickering. I don't, I don't get into that. Yeah. I just love it, you know. And I like, last night I give that guy all opportunity. And he treat hobo, you know. Yeah. I said, man, you sure? You know. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people. That's my dog, you know. I never eat the judge. Yeah. Actually, you're first class, and that's just the way I am, you know. Yeah. What about because you took that break and you were you were going to some hunts before that too? Oh yeah. You know, then you took that break and you got your business going and your boy wanted to go hunting and stuff. What was the differences, you know, from the time that you quit and got out until you get big country bought? You know, I had good dogs. Um, we always, you know. We had good dogs. I thought I had good dogs. I remember we'd go hunting. We'd cure hot dogs, and mm-hmm. we would cook, and, man, we'd have a ball. Um, we treat coons. Now, the dogs that, that I got, you better have your boots and lights on when you cut them. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's people say dogs are not good as they used to, used to be. You know, I had good dogs back then. You know, I didn't get to run the big hunts, and people know the you know big names but we treat coons everywhere and there was no comparison to these dogs yeah. we got now people say oh they're not good as they used to be no nah, that's wrong these dogs now people are packing some good dogs yeah especially at the level we're hunting at, yeah you know and then you get back into it you get country bought uh you get heels bought you get uh the deuce dog and and, and hobo and trigger and trigger you know it's not like you guys were just buying run-of-the-mill dogs either <laughs> you know the dogs of today your dogs today may be a little better than what you had when you quit but you were also going out and getting some of the best dogs yep. and that's a credit to you know you talked to west 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 was telling you about big country did you go to hunt with country whenever oh, you yeah. bought him yeah oh, i went out for three nights yeah you know a lot of people goes to look for a dog when they price a big money dog a lot of people goes to pick them apart. Yeah, you know, and and if I hadn't have seen that dog and he was blue, I'd have swore he was a walker. Yeah, and I was like, Steve, he made like four trees and never barked. I said, Steve, this dog's silent, and we hunted all night. And all oh, honesty, I never told Steve thirty minutes. I had already made up my mind. Yep. I was buying him. We hunted three nights, and we hunted the daylight. And we put country up at six o'clock that morning. He was barking in for breath like I was like, This is unbelievable. Yeah. And I mean country's just it's you know, I never thought I would say find another dog as good as country, especially a pup off of him. You know, but but when John come to Savannah with Champ, he called on a Thursday. They said, You need to come to Savannah tomorrow night on a Friday. I said, John, I'm busy, he said, You need to come. And we come up and champ treat eight singles as fast as you could cut him second night on the marsh. Mm-hmm. And I just sit down. I just couldn't take it in. You know what I mean? I was like, I never thought we'd ever get, the, much less a pub. I said, we'd never own another country. Yeah. I was like, man. And, and I mean, it just blowed me away. And it, now I'm honestly now, Josh, that was one of the best feelings. You know, I could never put in words that, you know, that run we had with country, you know, with the people yeah. keeping up with country, that was phenomenal. I mean, now everybody, if country was here, people would drive up here just to see country. Yeah. They don't care about us. They want to see country. <laughs> That's right. Um, I mean, country just, his demeanor, his, when he walks out, 
he walks like he knows he's the man. Yeah. You know, it just everything about country. And then just see this champ dog and man, champ, I, champ not only trees coons like country, and I've hunted with champ a couple times now. But he looks like him. He acts like him. He's got the same demeanor. He's just happy go lucky. You know, he's happy to be there. And uh, that's what really struck me the first time I was with Champ because we've, you know, you see pups out of out of dogs that, you know, may look similar but they don't act the same, or they act the same but they don't look the same, or they don't treat him. But he, it's almost like you cloned him. Yep. You know, and obviously, I told John whenever I hunted with him, I said I'm happier for Ashley than I am for you. <laughs> Because I knew John, what it was like. John, I mean, John loved country, don't get me wrong, but now John don't get as close to him as I do. Yeah. You know, like he called the other night, I sold Paige. Who would ever a million years thought he'd have sold Paige? Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's business. I mean, I understand why. We got all these good dogs. Paige is be six years old. Yeah. You know, if we're going to sell her, now's the time to sell her. But Paige is a, Paige is a $20,000 brood beach. Yeah. You know, and pups off a. Of, Z first crosses already won their hundred some yeah. of them. Yeah. Um. So John don't get his he don't get as close to him like I do. Like yeah. hobo, he said I'm selling hobo. I said no. Nah. I said we, <laughs> <laughs> he said he sold. I said no. Nah. He said you serious? I said no. I said you because you know I brought hobo yeah. home that winter and man, me and hobo just got on a personal level and me and that Joker clicked and I know what he is. Yeah. You know, do his, he don't win everywhere he goes, but hobo's nice yeah he is very nice though and and um he's not as flashy as country and do things he has some downtime but overall he's a yeah i can bring into my house and enjoy me tree coons yeah and um and that's more important to you than, exactly yeah and john said well that's this you know i'm got this out of me sold in then the next morning and he called early, and I know it was on one. So John don't get up early. <laughs> and he called me and said, you serious, ain't you? You ain't going to sell him. I said, no. He's, he said, all right. He's let me call the man, and and we worked it out. But, you know, we're in a good spot. And then, you know, Lady uh, Randy give John half a lady, and, mm-hmm. you know, that was a phenomenal deal for him. And then we got Champ, and we just bought a pup off of Echo and Meg. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, we can't hunt with so much. And, you know, here where I'm at, when it gets hot, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not like where you guys are. You yeah. know, when we get <clears throat> May, June, it's over for us. Yeah. Well, if you get a really, really good one and you can't hunt it, May or June, just give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you fixed up. <laughs> Tell me about heels too. Heels. Heels come from my country, and I like. I've always really liked heels. Man, and, heels was one of the ones I bought when I bought country. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody, Steve hunted, um, country and. But when I got heels, nobody hunted heels. Yeah. She was my girl, you know. And, man, it's just, she could water. She was crazy. Now, she'd swim the biggest river. She'd come up here and <laughs> swim off an island. Yeah. She swam across the island. Some duck hunters was hunting. She swam across in a big million-dollar subdivision. Houses <laughs> everywhere. And I was sitting here watching her, and I could see her collar going across the water. I said, there's no way that dog's swimming. I said, she's gone. She went over and treated the sub. Almost got ran over. The duck hunter was putting the boat in the dock. <laughs> they called. I said, Judge, I'm done. And I was two miles at the back of the mar. I had to walk all the way out. But anyway, Hills, is, Hills can treat any. Hills was the only dog besides Champ that come down here that could just tree dominate. Yeah. She tree like seven singles in 200 yards. John said, John had never seen her perform. Yeah. And um, John, we was hunting country. We was hunting a bunch of dogs that night on the island. John said, I see why she's got that WC in front of her yeah. name tonight. Yeah. She showed out. And I mean, he was just another one. She's a freak, you know, to, to go to your country and tree coons then come here and treat coons like that. You don't find that every day, Josh. No. I mean, and, and Hills could go to your place and coons laid up and treat them like, make it look easy. Yeah. And Hills is very special. Um, Hills was always a, if she wanted to or not. When, yeah. When she, she was wanted, quirky When now. she wanted to, <laughs> she would just beat your brakes off and there wasn't nothing you could do about it. Something I learned about Hills, though, you could not hunt her hard enough to get her ready. Yeah. Because you hunt her hard, she'd quit. So I changed things with heels. I'd hunt her, then I'd treadmill her. Yeah. And that was the best thing. She never quit on me. Yeah. Never. Yeah. When I done when I seen 
and that's something I always be, had a talent at with dogs, like fixing stuff. Yeah. You know, and I always, always loved that. And I paid attention to heels. I said, I cannot get this dog ready because she'll quit. Yeah. She'll get tired. So I, I switched up some things and I started just treadmill on a treadmill. I'd hunt her two hours, drive an hour, come home, put her on a treadmill for an hour. Yeah. And man, fast you could cut her. She was, I said, I got you figured out your old hussy. You know. <laughs> And then, you know, we bred her a couple of times and that pup that cross off of um trigger and heels done mm-hmm. good. Um country and heels, they you know for the two dogs it was a okay cross, but yeah. you know, the pups you country and heel you figured you know what I mean? But they didn't make what we thought, but I was always wondering if they would trail too much. Yeah. You know. Some of them did. Yeah. The little boy that was here earlier, I I give him a pup and he but he was in the North Carolina Youth Championship. He's got a nice one. Um, there's some nice ones out there. Um, but old Hills is my girl. She's yeah. she's in the house right now. Um, we've been having a little problem with her with her temperature dropping. And I took her to the vet, and her levels was phenomenal. And the vet said, I guess she's a house dog from this point forward. That I didn't f- break your heart I too said, bad, I did I guess it? so. <laughs> <laughs> what about one thing I did want to ask you is – Strickland when he when he bought in on country, and did you know John before any of that? You know, I heard of John. Yeah. Um, John called me. You know, John always with the type. If you know, he got what he wanted. You yeah. know, and everybody knows that John put pressure on you to. Mm-hmm. I never forget it. John called one night, and Cressa was laying on my arm on the pillow. He said, "Hey, I'm John Strickland, Springfield, Kentucky." And it come up Springfield, Kentucky. He said, "I want to talk to you about buying the Blue Dog." And I said, okay. He said, uh, I know you paid this for him. He said, and when he said that, and the phone was on loud, and I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to cut it down. I was like, who is this idiot's gonna get me? Because I've never told nobody what I paid for him. Your wife, especially. <laughs> yeah. She said, she said, what did he say? I said, nothing, nothing. And I was trying to mumble, and John couldn't understand me. And he's like, I can't understand you. But I was trying to get off the phone, you know. Yep. I said, this dude's gonna get me in a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I said, no, nah, I ain't for sale. And I hung up. Boy, and John, John, like, this dude just blowed me off, you know. And Josh, I mean, money, I work hard. Don't get me wrong. And all my guys tell you. Yeah. I, I work just as hard as the next person and get down and dirty. And, and my guys will tell you. It, I do whatever to, you know, to make it right. And 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 when he when he um called you know money don't you know get me excited yeah. so when he asked me it, it was um yeah he offered me a good profit but i know what i had you yeah. know and at that time the hunts was coming back for the big money um so i know he could make money yeah. you know so and then john called back and John's smart. Oh, John, yeah. John come from the bottom and, and yeah. successful. You know, people, John, John's very good at reading people. Oh, yeah. And John knowed I was the type of person not to throw money around, that that would, you know, yeah. that wouldn't work well with me. You know what I mean? So he, he figured that out, and he said, well, hey, we'll meet, and we'll talk sometime. And he left it alone. Yeah. And that was the best thing he did with me. And and. When we met you think it, if he'd have kept bugging you, you'd have got bald oh, headed yeah, and said no. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that don't whip, you know. Yep. You call me and keep on on that. Just especially I'm busy, you know. Yep. I'm busy right. all the time, and I'm in Greece, and you call me, and yeah, that don't work well right. with me. Right. And and so he, he was smart, and we went to the CHKC World. He was there, and Steve was um, in the middle of that team nationals and. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, and I walked through, I said, John. You didn't, you didn't get on the, in on that with Burke? No, <laughs> no, no. He said, uh, um, I walked up, John shook his hand, then we went around the corner and talked, and um, I said, you know, Steve's starting this, and, 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 you know, we talked, and I said, I don't know what's going to happen, and we made a deal. He said, if he wins this world hunt, you're not going to let him have him. I said, it don't matter, you know, if I tell you something, yeah. you're going to get him, and we got in the final four. And John said, I'll never get that dog. That was the infamous kick the red bone, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. 
<laughs> Steve made a bad way. It's, they treat that coon right there on camera. You saying she yep. come and cover it was terrible. But anyway, um, and we made the deal and we left and I called John and we met in um, Nashville and John got him. Yeah. And which, was you know, that hard to do to give that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I know, you know, I know country's potential is age. I couldn't bring him home and put him in the kennel. I know right. he had to go. He had to be campaigned. And country, everybody knows at that time, his downfall was been out of pocket. Yeah. You know, he would go too deep. And John said, well, tell me what's his problem. I said, John, he goes too hard. He said, I can fix him. And um, John got him, and he set in on him, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and like now, when me and John buys a big money dog, we exchange money. But if I buy something... We don't even exchange money and put their name on it. We roll. Yeah, that's that's where our relationship has gone now. And and at that time, I didn't know him, you know. But and John knows if and Doug, you know. Then I met Doug later. Yeah. And Doug's first class, and and Doug sure don't care what they call. He, he, <laughs> he we call him and say get it bought. You know. We got to get Doug on here. We got to get Doug a dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you Doug. guys, you guys were arguing yesterday about a. Doug said he wants to buy that dog and Strickland won't ever let him. He said, John caught him about a 12. We never paid as much as we pay for a 12-month-old puppy. Never. Yeah. I said, John, you lost your mind. Doug said, we got to get him in beat angle. He loves beating Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, not only are you partners, and you, you don't see this very often. You know, you guys, even when you guys had all your handlers with Jake and Jeff and, you know, uh, who else judas um you guys were friends oh yeah you know because if you guys weren't coon on if you guys didn't have these dogs together you'd probably still go on vacation with families you'd probably still hang out i mean how important is that to have someone especially when you guys are like you said spending 20 grand on entries and spending 20 30 40 grand on dogs or whatever you know you gotta have someone you can trust too yep and, and see what way me and doug and john clicked we both was cut from the same cloth mm -hmm. you know like john john busted his butt you know he come from a single wide trailer to build yep. his success you know and then doug doug come from the bottom so that's how we you know all three of us you know like some people wants to pay 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 to do this pay me and doug and john we'll do it yeah you know and that's something that you have to be careful with all three of us you know, if you're lazy, you ain't going to make it with right. us. You know, we tough. And and that's why we click. Yeah. You know, that's why we just, we're a lot alike in ways. Well, people that watch my stuff or listen to my stuff and they they see the pro hound and they're seeing all the, listening to the podcast, watching the videos, all that, they don't understand. You know, to, to a lot of folks, and I get it, I was there at one time, it's just rich folks playing games. And they don't understand the effort that y'all have went through to get to this point to where you can be well off and playing these games, you know? And so instead of, you know, pushing them down and, and being, a, being aggravating about it, you know, I don't understand why they don't congratulate <laughs> folks like Ashley Ox and Dime and John Strickland and even the handlers, you know, the Michael Wards and the dual Murphys that are making a living doing this. Cause you know, most of us, just like you and me, we all come from pretty much nothing. Yeah, from the bottom. <laughs> yep. And, and it's work. It's work. These, yeah. these dogs are, I mean, it's a lot of work. Yeah. People think that you just get these dogs ready, like Ward and Weed, and Weed's a hard hunting joke. Yeah. John, yeah, he is. John's hunting every every night or every other night. Yeah. You know, and see, I don't make a living out of it. When you, you work the way I do, then go home, put your boots on, and it's tough. Yeah. And then hunt my country. You know, <laughs> let's talk about that. I want to talk because I haven't got up there to hunt with you yet. And to be frankly honest with you, Ashley, I really don't want to. I've seen all your videos and all the water and stuff. But what is what are you turning these dogs loose in when you're playing? Man, that's all we got. You know, I got some river bottoms and everybody pretty much here around here, two hours away. We got good hunting until we get a lot of water. Yeah. When we get a lot of water, it pushes us out, you know, and and. You got some people, you know, cutting so much timber, you know, it's, the hunting's terrible. Um, but that's how I've ever hunted yeah. all my life. Yeah. You know, so for me, people that come, they said, man, if I had to hunt this, I'd quit. <laughs> so when when you come here and hunt two hours at my house, that's hunting like six hours at your house. Yeah. A dog's just, you know, burning so many calories. He's yeah. swimming. He's, 
Do you think it makes them better in oh, the long yeah, run? Absolutely. Like, and, and that's something I knew is the knowledge of hunting when I got back in it that I would I had to make connections in Illinois, Missouri, right. Kentucky, because when we bring dogs from here to spend here and go to Europe, they look like idiots. Yeah. They're looking for a run. They're looking yeah. for they don't know how to run fuel edges. Um and I know that I had to make that connection to to, to make that happen yeah. in in um but when I bring dog from your house and bring here, phenomenal. Yeah. Okay, prime example, Apollo. Yeah. John beat Hobo, dominated him every time we went to the marsh. I mean, just beat beat him. I brought Hobo here, hunted him 60 days, 90 days. We went to the marsh. We was coon for coon. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, he just, here, dogs got the trail of coon. You bring a dog here just flying, he'll be out of pocket. Yeah. He, yeah. He's got to know how to use that nose. And he's got to know how to hunt these runs. The coon's on the run, yeah. on the water. And it's tough, Josh, you know, but like I said, I've done it all my life, and and I don't get to hunt as much as I like to. But yet. Yeah. 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 you got to tend yeah. to your plan, actually. I want, I want to see you in the woods every night here before long. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, I could go, like, to John's in, in Illinois and, like, go hunt with you or something like that in, in the summertime yeah. and get away, yeah. get away from this summertime here's snakes and we start where i'm at i ain't got that many gators but they're moving in on me yeah, yeah. but i can drive 30 minutes and be in a bunch of gators yeah yeah so you know when you hunt a caliber dog we got to a point john said oh you just a seasonal hunter but i, I we can't afford to bring these dogs out and no. get them eat up you know what I mean? or snake bed or snake yeah yeah when i was a little boy my granddad um when season was over his good dogs that was it yeah they stayed in the pen. They come out next season. He hunt young dogs, but his best dogs never come out in the pen. What is, uh, I want you to pick one. Is it country? Favorite dog of all time, Ashley. And you've had, especially in the last eight, nine years, you've had some great ones come through your kennel. Country, personal, I mean, yeah. I mean, overall, country was a good one. Trigger, I loved old Trigger now. Yeah. Um, Trigger was a good one. We was talking about him the other night. Every dog that handlers handled, Trigger probably, everywhere he went, he paid yeah. his way. Everywhere. Like, Trigger didn't get in the whole $30,000 and then went a big hunt to get out. Yeah. Trigger won everywhere he went. Um, and him and Jake was a phenomenal team, you know. Um, so, I mean, every one of them, like Champ, I hadn't got to build that relationship with Champ um, because – John's in love with him, you yeah. know, he's got him. So, and, you know, and the champ's a good one. And, and I know I would love him the same way. But overall, you know, with the time, country was a project for me, man. Yeah. When he come here, that joker, this ain't no lie. I would not let nobody go hunting with him. I said, here I am, went and bought a blue dog, paid all this money. I'd cut that joker loose and he'd just look at me. Like, I was like, what? Is, I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it, well, he got hurt in his stomach at that chkc world home. yeah no before that i'm sorry before and and i brought him home and man i had to keep him with me 24 7 that's when he was riding in the truck yeah. with me. he had all them staples in his stomach and that took a toll on him and um i promise you it was 60 days before he treated a coon and but when he started clicking i mean I picked that joke up seven miles at my house really he i mean he was just shoo, he'd get i mean if old bad track he'd he just go and then he learned how to start training coons and the country was just a, just a different dog um but he was the aggravating this dog probably getting <laughs> the, the click here you know yeah but you know i enjoy bringing these dogs you know from kentucky illinois to just to see how they do in my country hobo um it took him a little while but yeah. not 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 as long and he just phenomenal just fell in yeah. Um, but overall, country and hills, you know, very personal. Like you said, hills could get you so mad. Oh yeah. Um, but if she was on, she'd beat the brakes off a of country. She'd beat all of them. Yeah. I mean, just like like John said, just put her up, just stop. I said, what you mean? He said, don't turn her loose again. Yep. <laughs> and that was just like country. After I hunted with him, I never wanted to hunt with him again. <laughs> I told because he did. He put. I'll still tell everybody this day. He put the perfect. I've never seen a dog have a perfect two hours. 
they've always had just a touch of downtime or they've done something. Yeah. They've always done something. You know, you hunt with a dog two hours in a cast situation. And he put together a perfect two hours in a place that I know we treat 10 or 11 coons or something like that that night. And there ain't that many coons in there. The mother dogs look good too. And I told Strickland when we got done, of course I was, I didn't believe it either. You know, I'd talk to you and I'd talk to John and everybody. I said, you guys are, <laughs> come on, don't tell me this. And Wes, uh, Wes was, Bella was in heat. We'd bred her to overdrive. And I was talking to Wes about, you know, breeding Bella, which we eventually did breed her to country. And uh, Wes goes, you ought to breed that dog to, to country. I said, you are crazy. Wes was country's biggest fan. Yeah, he was. And when Wes nobody was, didn't think, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I said, Wes, why? He said, he's beat me two times. Yeah. Ruby was on her best of her game then. Yeah. He said, actually, he beat me like one's supposed to beat me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know, coming from Wes, you, you had to listen. I mean, it, you could... A lot of people say, well, you know, when I, when Wes told me that, and I was like, whoa, you know. Yeah. He, and, and Well, you believed it faster than I did because I told him he was full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> but Wes knows I'm a sucker for a big mouth and a big locate because country has that flash, too. You know, he had all the bells and whistles. And I was telling him. dollar locate. And that was one of the reasons that we bred to Overdrive because I loved Overdrive's mouth, yeah. you know. And Overdrive was a good dog, and those pups turned out good. And I was going to tell you, too, one of the Bella – country pups is out in pennsylvania brad bowser's got him right now and he loves him really yeah absolutely loves him Good. so that dog's getting ready to come out and get broke out and want some win some casts and some money too but i remember the night i hunted with him and i called jed and i said hey i said when bella comes in heat again we're breeding her to big country and he was like me you're so ignorant you ain't then we do. then he hunts with him he goes yeah i think that'll work let's do that <laughs> so country was the dog that Jed called me on that cast that night and tried to buy him. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. And I said, I guarantee you, I know if Ashley wouldn't sell him to Strickland for a long time and was pushing Strickland off, we ain't getting our hands on him. But, yeah, I would like to have him. <laughs> but he was a dog that when people are around him, they just liked him. Yeah. You know, he was a like, he had a good personality, had all that talent. And that year, year and a half or whatever, that he was campaigned really hard, he had a whole fan club. And he had some haters. And a lot of the haters were from the blue tick side. And I think they've kind of come around now, haven't yeah. they? But oh, yeah. they. I mean, you sit back and look what country's accomplished. He had seven pups mm -hmm. in the top 100 of the UKC world. Yeah. I mean, you can hate him. You can whatever. But, I mean, <laughs> it, it, I, I sit there and John and John was looking. He said, man, this dog in the last five years look what he's done Ashley yeah I said John I just sit back you know he's just you know all around just the impact of everything of country yeah the dog taunt that we hunted with um what is his name we hunted Randy Morgan's yeah Logan Ray's Logan dog. Ray's yeah. yeah real deal yeah real deal he's gonna win big you yeah. know when you start hunting with dogs like and and, and he's off of your dog you I know, didn't even know taunt was off country yeah I did not know that. Yep. Jed liked Tonk when he hunted that against him Joker's too. Joker's nice. Yeah. yeah, he's nice. And you know, and you know, as an owner, that just thrills my soul. Yeah. You know, country's made an impact. Yeah, and he's brought you, you know, good friends and Doug oh, and, and I John. Couldn't. And I said other, you know, like like when I say the whole everything with country, man, I was at the lowest of my lowest, Josh, when I bought country. You know, when I lost my little boy, you know. When he got killed, it was, you know, I was, I was, at, man, I was in a bad place. And country, you know, hunting, and I'm not the type to sit around and cry and carry on. I, I worked, I went 10 times harder. Yeah. I blew my back out again. I'd come home at night and get on a track hoe. I was at the point I didn't care about losing my wife or nothing. I yeah. didn't care about that. You know, I was in a dark place. And, when I bought country and I went back to something as a little boy that I love, that dog would never know what I could put in words what he did for me overall. Um, you know, he, he brought me out of just the joy that I had lost mm -hmm. and, and the love of hounds and hunting. And, and, and like, of life. You of got life. the joy of life. Got, yeah. yeah. When you, you know, you always hear older people say, you never know pain until you lost a child. You know, and... and 
I never thought I would endure that pain, and I did. And God brought me through it. But but country was, you know, I didn't I didn't talk. I didn't talk to nobody. Mm-hmm. And I was at the point I didn't care about. I mean, I just worked, 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 and 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 I just kept on. And finally, I started coming back around, you know. And, and I said, my little boy, be proud, yep. you know. But country overall, he just was never no overall friends. Everything the impact he made on my life, and as a father, I couldn't imagine. So I'm not going to act like I can. But you hear, you know, you think of Jason Doherty's story with XCon. You know, there's a man that was at the lowest of lows too, and we were. I was just down there with him not too long ago, and he said he's going to be sick when that dog dies. And I can't. I've not had that with dogs. I've not had that relationship with dogs. But the more I do this, what I'm doing now, I, I understand. Yeah. You know, I've never been one to get attached to a dog. You know, I've never been, you know, they're in one day and out the next, and I take good care of them and stuff, you know. But when I hear your story and Jason's and, and you think about what these dogs can do for us and what they've done for us, uh, you're right to be proud of country and, and what you guys have accomplished and what he's done for you and all that stuff. And I'm just glad that to get to be able to sit down with you and and let everybody else know too because like i said people just see him in the magazine and they see him on facebook yeah but they don't know the whole story don't know the whole story that joker he's every day he gets out he gets tied out he gets touched and every he's just not yep. a dog yeah i got somebody that's their job and that's yep. my wife she she you know it ain't nobody's hired that's her job yeah she takes care of the German Shepherds and country, and every day he's, and he looks phenomenal. And country looks for that. Yeah, I mean he he wants his pen spotless. He he's a very I mean he's he's a personal dog. <laughs> he's a high maintenance he's, dog. He's yeah. something else. And, <laughs> and I love the Joker. He's it's gonna be tough when he's gone, but he's doing good. You know he's live when he looked like he's five. Yeah, I hunted him in November. I posted a video. He come on the tree, man. He sound like a million dollars. Yeah, but he was a good one. I tell you another one. A lot of people overlooks just a good one. A little black dog. Yeah, Deuce. He's Old a Deuce. good one. If he had the mouth, yeah, he he would really. Jacob Jump loves that dog yeah. too. He yeah. really, you could tell he's he he likes that dog. If he had a mouth, Jump wouldn't have him. John would have him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's in store for you and John and Doug and? You guys just going to hunt what you got now? We're going to hunt hobo. Um, we're going to keep promoting um, Jump Scott Deuce. Yeah. Um, just going to, in the s- summer, just going to get hobo back yep. when I'm done. She's going to continue to promote him. And basically, just like I told Jeff, we're just going to rotate hobo out with me. And when I get ready for yep. a big, he can still go, you know, and win and make money. But certain hunts, $5,000, hunter, 65 dollars Randy Morgan, you know, I'm going to take the range, you know. Yeah. So it still worked out for it. We still got this pup coming up. We got some a lot of young dogs behind us in country, yeah. country, country pups. Um, I just Doug. He, I think before it's over, I think Doug's going to start hunting. You I know? hope so. He he he's getting excited. You I know? wish he's, him and John wasn't wasn't partners on dogs so they can draw each other. <laughs> <laughs> and Doug, good Doug's good person. And, yeah. Um, and we just like. Savannah, well, you know, like all of us is going to the truck hunt next week, pro sport. Yep. Um, we, we'll stay together. And when we go down there, we'll stay at Doug's house and John's. We fill a ship, yep. you know. And, and that means the world to me, you know. People, I work for money every day. Yep. You know, it ain't about the money for me. And sometimes I get upset. Me and John talks from day one. I never want to make it about the money with coon hunting. But... You have to be careful with these entries and all the, you'll make it about yeah. money. Yeah. When you start paying these kind of entries, you, you have to step back and like, hold, oh, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't want us to get to that point. I want us to continue to fellowship, enjoy it, and, and I don't want to make it a job. Yeah. Well, Ashley, we'll wrap this up. And uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that you're going to take the reins and get to some hunts and and do what you love uh i'm proud of you guys for what you've all done with country and uh 
I think everybody's got a little bit of attachment to that dog. People that don't even coon hunt. It's crazy yep. that yep. keeps up with country. Every, I tell you what he reminds me of is uh, when Bad Habit was doing what Bad Habit was doing. Everybody knew who Bad Habit was. Yep. Everybody knew. And I, my kids will look at a dog that you can tell is a crossed up walker with a blue tick. I'm like, I wonder if that one's out of country. I wonder if that one's out of country. You know, And they, they don't know half the dogs in the world, but they know who big country is. You know, so... But a lot of that credits to you. Uh, you're the one that got him. You're the one that made the right decisions with him. And so uh, I just want to say congratulations, Ashley. Thank you, Josh. All right. We're going to let you go. You got another hunt tonight. You, you won last night. We'll get you a double cast win. Maybe maybe get in that finals. Huh? Maybe. Maybe so. All right. I appreciate you, Ashley. Right, thank you. All right, guys. That is Ashley Oxendine. And this is Tree Dog Tuesday. We thank you for listening.